Mike is readily, readily misinterpreting what J.I. Packer has said. In 2011, the celebrated author and apologist, Dr. Norman Geisler, released an open letter to Dr. Mike Lycona regarding his suggestion that the account of the raised saints in Matthew 27 might be portents, special effects, or symbolic elements meant to communicate the theological importance of the moment in the story. Geisler's letter ended with, quote, in brief, I heartily agree with the first part of your title, the resurrection of Jesus, but cannot concur with the last part of it, a new historiographical approach. We don't need a quote unquote new historical approach. The old historical grammatical approach is sufficient as it has been down through the centuries. Indeed, if the principles of your historical approach of using extra biblical material as determinative of the meaning of a biblical text were used consistently on the Bible, then it would undermine orthodoxy by dehistoricizing many crucial passages of the Bible." End quote. This article was followed by some 22 others that are still cataloged on the late Dr. Geisler's ministry website. For many, it seemed like Lycona was violating a particular view of inerrancy. He questioned the resurrection of the saints in Matthew 27. You know, one of the things that Geisler charged Lycona with was denying the inerrancy of the Bible, specifically as understood by the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. For others, it seemed important and even objectionable, but not a denial of inerrancy. It wasn't that Matthew got this fact wrong but that Matthew may well have meant the account differently than many of us think. Nevertheless, the controversy would continue. In 2017, Lycona released his book, Why Are There Differences in the Gospels? In it, he evaluates the biographies of Plutarch and reasons that they are of a similar genre to the Gospels, and that Plutarch's work helps us to understand literary devices that were used within that genre, perhaps like the literary device of the raised saints. For the purposes of this video, Norman Geisler, R.C. Sproul, and J.I. Packer were involved in the crafting of what is known as the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. Clearly, Geisler thought that Lycona's views placed him outside of what is acceptable within the Chicago Statement. J.I. Packer passed away in 2020, and he has often been cited as agreeing with Geisler about Lycona's work. Yet it's also been suggested that Packer actually agreed with Lycona and thought his work could be consistent with the Chicago Statement. Has Mike Lycona misrepresented J.I. Packer? On the one hand, Packer endorsed Lycona's book on the Gospels. On the other, Geisler says the following, quote, Packer insisted that he strongly stands by both his affirmation of the ICBI statements on inerrancy and that Lycona's views were categorically contrary to it, end quote. What Mike Lycona is doing is he's actually misrepresenting not only the ICBI, but J.I. Packer. In the midst of this, a critic of Dr. Lycona, Dr. Bill Roach, has challenged Lycona on his thoughts on Packer, as well as his understanding of the Chicago Statement, inerrancy, and inspiration. When you look at the literature and you look at the history of this, he's misrepresenting J.I. Packer, clearly. Now Lycona, Dan Wallace, Paul Copan, and others discuss what J.I. Packer actually said about these matters in their presence. So I gave this my standard lecture on why there are differences in the Gospels. And immediately after, Packer, who's the first to come up to me, and he said, thanks, tops, agreed with every word. I also remember very clearly him saying that he was in fear of Norman Geisler. He said that on more than one occasion. He said that if his, if his, he says he did not want to say too much publicly, he didn't want to, he didn't want to give up too much permit because he was afraid of the backlash that would come from Norman Geisler. And he said he always lived with a little bit of hesitancy because of what Norm could say or do to Packer. And Dan and Greg um, affirmed the accuracy the way I described my view to Packer. And then I asked him if he thought my views were compatible or incompatible with the Chicago statement. He said compatible. And then Packer said, and I quote, these are the notes I took. Norm contacted and asked me to issue a statement about your view. I did it reluctantly for fear of having Norm turn against me. I think I owe you an apology. And then later on, Paul, it was at the meeting that you and I had with him the following month. He said, I confess to not having read Mike's 750 page opus before Norm asked me to make a statement. End quote. That's the notes that you took, Paul. Do you recall him saying that? Oh, yeah, sure. 
Um, do you Mike. recall him saying something like what, uh, I forgot if it was Greg or Dan just said a moment ago, he wanted to get Norm off of his back. Yeah. Yeah, and that was definitely the concern uh, of, of Norm's you know, more overbearing nature and, uh, and Packer's reluctance to enter into the fray and his not wanting to create any waves. So that was uh, definitely a temperamental difference. Packer just got uh, pushed hard and, uh, and you know the rest of the story. All of that was in part one of this discussion, linked in the description to this video. But here in part two, we'll be discussing Roach's comments about Lycona's views and the Chicago Statement.